welcome to this special episode of the Virtual Art Studio. My name is Brandon Belanger. I'm an artist and a biologist, and we're going to do a very special thing today. We're going to celebrate insects. So, to begin with, I'm going to talk to you about my sculptural series, The Love Motel for Insects. Then we're going to take a look at a pollinator garden that we planted in front of the ACA. And then we're going to take a field trip out to Arneville to make insect nets. And hopefully, if we're lucky, maybe catch some butterflies or some other great bugs to look at and explore. So, just to begin with, why love bugs? Well, a lot of folks here in South Louisiana think the only insects we have are mosquitoes, maybe some bed bugs and other creatures that we want to swap most of the time. But that's just a tiny little fraction of the diversity of insects found here in South Louisiana. And these insects are very important because they're pollinating our flowers, pollinating our crops. Probably about 70% of the food that we consume somehow is involved with insect services. So they're very, very important to ecosystems very important to us and one of the things that I think we can do through art is learn a little bit more about them and learn to celebrate and appreciate them. So uh, a number of years ago I started to create these sculptures called Love Motel for Insects and literally they use ultraviolet light on sculptural forms to attract insects. Uh, what the UV lights do is they're producing a high frequency of ultraviolet that even our eyes can't see, but insects and other arthropods see a much wider spectrum of UV. So this is like creating a full moon event for them. So they're attracted to it. It doesn't hurt them, but it's a great chance for the insects to come. They land and we can do these bug watching activities. So this is one I created last year and it's themed or inspired by the shape of a monarch butterfly, a species of concern because monarchs have started to disappear. Um, though we just found out recently that in the past few years, uh, last year's crop of monarchs started to creep back up. So their population seems to be expanding and growing a little bit again, which is really important. Um, one of the reasons we think that is, is because of people like ourselves that are going out and planting milkweed and food for monarchs uh, on their journey between Canada and Mexico. They stop right here in Louisiana, so the, one of the ways that we can help them is by planting uh, milkweed for them. So this sculpture has been migrating around. It's been here at the Acadiana Center for the Arts. It's been all over Houston, and it's literally migrating to New Orleans tomorrow night for Lunafest. And the idea is that it'll be glowing and we'll be bug watching and talking about insects and trying to get people inspired by this side of nature that most of us aren't even aware of. So one of the ways that we can really help the nature in our backyard is really planting native plants. Looking at whatever resources we have and working with organizations like the Acadiana Native Plant Project and planting native plants. What that does is it provides food for both larval and adult insects and adult butterflies and other species, which then those insects provide food for all kinds of things like birds and lizards and frogs and, and other mammals. Um, and so what we've done here in front of the Acadiana Center for the Arts is we took out, there were some old non-native bushes that were kind of dying anyway. We took those out and working with Acadiana Native Plant Project and the Girl Scouts, we planted all these great native pollinator species. So there's different types of sunflowers and milkweeds and salvinia, um, lots of different flowering plants that are not only good for butterflies, but also hummingbirds and other species. So this is just one simple thing that we can do is learn about the plants that historically would have been found here in our region and just make sure that we're planting those in our yard too. Hello and welcome, welcome back and welcome to the Atelier de la Nature. The Atelier de la Nature is an Arneville, Sicilia area nature reserve and eco campus where my wife, my family and I, we do all kinds of programs about inspiring us to learn more about nature through art and science, food and fun. And so what we're looking at is really, we're right in the middle of renaturing uh, this property. When we moved here six years ago, it was all soybean fields. 
And what we've been doing since then is working with the scouts and all kinds of groups of folks that come out and help us. And we've been planting trees like crazy. We planted over 1300 baby trees. So there's a baby forest back there. And on the edge, there's all these trees that are growing now that are new. And then we've also been creating Cajun prairie habitat, which is an essential part of pollinator habitat for our part of Louisiana. So in the, all the way in the back, there's a wetland too. So you have to come visit us out here someday and check out all the neat animals and join us for some of the educational activities we do. So one of the things that we love to do over here is make bug nets. Um, because as we talked about before, bugs are so special and the bugs in our area are so special. Here's one making a cameo appearance as we speak. Here's a little ladybug. Hi. So this is my co-star for this episode. And to make our bug nets, what we're going to do, you're going to need a pillowcase, but a special kind of pillowcase, one that has, you can kind of see, so regular old pillowcase from a thrift store, but one that has a seam. So a seam at the top, and I'll explain why in just a few minutes, but you can get these at any kind of thrift store. Um, just don't use one of your parents without asking permission. Um, you're gonna need some tape, a regular old wire hanger, and some kind of stick. This is an old piece of recycled bamboo. You can use sticks you find out in the yard. Uh, you can use broomsticks, anything like that. And a pair of pliers, a handy dandy recycled jar, and a field guide. You can look up things online too, but the field guide will help us ID different things that we find. So to get started, the first stage is to take your, your hanger and just bend it. Start to make it into a little circle. And you want to make sure to get the, the metal soft ones, because if you get some of them, some of the metal ones are super hard to bend but these are nice and wiry. They're not very good for putting clothes on, but um, they're great for making bug nets, so that's all that matters. What you're gonna wanna do is get some adult supervision here, but take your pliers and open this up, just like that, easy peasy. And then straighten this up. There we go. So make a nice circle there, all right? There we go. Now, very easy. Then what you're gonna wanna do is start at the seam, one of these, these little points over here, and this. And literally you're gonna try to poke a hole into this fabric. Not all the way through, but through that first layer. And I mean, if it's tricky, you can get a pair of scissors to do it. If they're cotton, they're really easy to poke through, like I just did. But again, maybe get some help if you need to. Don't want to poke yourself. But what I'm doing is I poke the hole in, and now I'm feeding the wire hanger all the way through. Go in. Go in. Can you see? See how it's starting to be a circle? The more we do that, the more we're making a perfect, perfect circle net. And you might need, you know, sometimes you need help with this part too. That's okay. Never be afraid to ask for help. And the wider we make it, we want to make it go all the way to the end and poke our way out. See how easy that was? So the nice thing about the cotton, as I said, it's very soft and you want to get it just like that. So it's nice and open all the way through. And then you're going to want to just twist it to kind of close it up. And the same kind of thing. You might need some help. Just get your pliers on there. Oops. Good. We're just kind of twisting it closed. Doesn't have to be perfect, but 
We twist it enough so that we want to make sure the fabric isn't going to move. And also by doing this, it gives us something easy to tape to. And kind of see, look at that. So it's just kind of like, see the way it's catching the wind already? And yeah, you can actually use this to see which direction the wind is going too, I guess. So there we go. So the next step is literally finding where we're going to tape our net to our stick. And oftentimes people will try to poke it in there. You really don't need to do that. You just need to put it on the side. It's kind of hard to poke it in there. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just literally going to put it down where I need it. Get a little piece of tape. I think duct tape works the best. You can use other types of tape, but you're going to need a nice strong tape like duct tape or, or Gorilla Tape. And just add one piece, then add another. maybe a third one. You don't have to overdo it. And the thing is, if your net breaks, the great thing about duct tape is you just retape it, right? So look, we've now made a really, really, really cool sweep net. And I'm going to show you why it's called a sweep net in just a minute. But the other thing I'm going to say is this is one for using to catch butterflies and grasshoppers and little insects that are going to be found kind of on these edge zones and the grasses. Um, one of the things about this kind of habitat, it's very important where you've got tall grasses, medium grasses going into forest. And so the forest is actually starting to grow. We always talk about other species migrating, but trees migrate through reproduction. So what's happening is that forest is growing into this field. And in 10, 20, 50 years from now, that forest will be all the way taking over this section of prairie. But in the meantime, it creates really special habitat for all kinds of different insects, but also lizards and snakes and bunnies and lots of creatures that kind of like this edge zone where they can go in and out. Um, and another thing I wanted to say is you can use this exact same technology, right? This technique, instead of using one of these pillowcases for catching insects, you can make one using a crawfish sack to catch fishes. So one that you could use in a pond instead. So here's our net. We're going to try it out in just a minute, but I want to show you just a neat thing that you can do to really personalize it. So what I've got are just simple markers. These are Sharpies. Uh, you don't have to use Sharpies. You can use any marker you want. You can even use paint, but literally what I like to do is when I have my own net, go down and you can use a reference if you want, but I like to make little bug portraits on there. And just to get things started, we were talking about the monarch butterfly before. So let's see if we can't find the monarch in here and just do a quick monarch drawing. So since we were talking about monarchs earlier, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a depiction of a monarch on our net itself. So you can either, and it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to use something like this, but you certainly can if it's helpful. So the first thing I like to do is literally do the outline of the wings, right? So bring them back in, da, 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 da. kind of go that way. One of the distinguishing things about the monarch are those beautiful patterns. And I'm sure a lot of you know this already, but when you find animals that have bright colors like that, or plants, oftentimes it means those, plant, those animals or plants are using that color to tell predators that they're not tasty. So what uh, monarchs do is they eat a plant called milkweed. And the milkweed has a toxin in it, and it carries through. The monarchs can eat it, but birds that eat monarchs learn very quickly, or other predators, that monarchs taste really bad and make them sick. So those colors are like a stop sign. It's called aposmatic coloration. Uh, I like to think to oppose something because it's really like nature's version of a stop sign. Here we have some little antennas. And we don't have to be super detailed, but 
We like to give our nets a little bit of creativity and personality. And especially like if it were a different time of the year, there's not a lot of monarchs right now. They're kind of all passed through. But sometimes we get them around Christmas time. Um, maybe we'll get lucky and see one. This will just give us an idea of one of the species we sure wish we could see out here today while we're collecting. We get a whole lot of them in the spring and earlier parts in the fall. In the spring, they come out, they lay their eggs on milkweed, and then the little caterpillars will hatch out, eat the milkweed, and then fly, fly um, further to the north. And we just gotta fill that in. And then in the fall, what happens is the adults are coming back and they're headed to Mexico to winter over. And then they're feeding on the pollen of goldenrod. People often think that goldenrod causes allergies. Um, but in fact, most people aren't impacted by goldenrod. It's other things. So that's the, that's the kind of big plant that you'll see in fields in the fall. And it's a really beneficial plant for lots and lots of different types of insects. So I'm just kind of filling this in real fast. You can do much more detailed if you like. You can also just make up your own species of butterfly. It doesn't have to be one that really exists in the world, but it can be. It's all up to you and your creativity. So I'm just kind of filling it in. Now, as I said, let's add some of that aposmatic coloration. And you can get, if you wanted to, you can try to get special fabric markers or fabric paint to do this. That's a really fun project. If we had more time together, we could paint some. Um, but you can certainly do that at home. And for those of you who've never looked at a butterfly wing under the microscope, which I bet a bunch of you haven't, what's really neat is this color and even the line work is made out of scales. So if you look under the microscope, if you just kind of look it up on the computer, you can see that butterflies and moths have these crazy scales on their wings. Moths are basically um, butterflies that are active at night. They evolved from butterflies. And now what's happening, it's interesting, butterflies that evolved into moths, some of the moths are now going full circle and starting to be active during the day again, which is pretty neat. But they all have these really cool scales on their wings, and some of them reflect light and do all these different things that help them avoid predators, such as having bright colors like that. So anyway, that's our real quick and rough monarch. And now hopefully we'll find some interesting insects that we can, we can look at. Um, one quick thing I will say too, one of the ways that you know an insect is an insect is because it has segmented body parts. And so uh, on this monarch, you can see a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and then segmented legs. So each one of their, their legs is gonna be different than us where we look at our limbs they're all kind of generally one piece. But if you look at insect legs, you can even see in these drawings here, segment, 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 and also an exoskeleton. Okay, guys, well, let's see if we can catch something now. What do you think? We're just gonna kind of go over to this edge and I'm gonna show you how to do some sweep netting. Okay. All right, so literally, you see the way I'm using this? I'm not trying to catch the bugs like this, because they would certainly get away, but I'm doing something called sweeping. It's just kind of like sweeping the floor in front of you. You just kind of go through, gently brush it through the plants. And this is an actual scientific technique for monitoring arthropod species, insects and other arthropods. So sometimes you hear this word, you know, I just explained what an insect is. Three of the characteristics are, it's got a segmented body, a head, thorax, and abdomen. There's an exoskeleton, segmented limbs, and generally they have 
complex life cycles where the babies don't really often don't look like the adults. Um, arthropods are also creatures relate their insects fit into that big group but so do spiders are in that group arachnids um, scorpions roly-polies so it's animals with segmented limbs but often more than six insects have six arachnids have eight and then on and on and on okay guys so speaking of cool critters with segmented limbs Okay, and exoskeletons, let's see what we found. Okay, I see a bucket, I see a net with bugs in it. Can you see inside there? Cool, can you see it? It looks like at least one either grasshopper or Katie did. So what we're gonna do is wait here for me for just a second while I go get my, my handy dandy jar. <laughs> All right, so y'all, I am a fan of recycling, so I like to use all kinds of different things over and over again in different ways and try to think of creative things to do. This is just very simple. It's a, a recycled jar of salsa. Um, what I would do is if I'm using this for more than a few minutes, you would poke holes in the top, so you'd probably want to get adult supervision with that. Um, but just glass, it's just so we can put the bugs in something temporarily to look at them. So, let's see, here we go. Now here's the tricky part, trying to get the, the insects to agree to go into the jar. They don't always agree that much, <laughs> but sometimes they do. And sometimes we're able to get them without too much trouble. Ooh, we got some good ones, guys. I see some diversity here. So you imagine this is like a week before Christmas here in Louisiana, the time of year where you wouldn't think we would see many insects. But here we go already. We've got a ladybug, another ladybug, some mayflies, which are really neat. They're an indicator of clean water. We've got a tiny little, another type of coleoptera beetle. And one of my favorites in here, which I'm having trouble catching, it's called a leaf hopper and a little cricket too so part of the fun and part of the challenge is trying to get them to agree to go into the net but there we go there's our cricket I don't know if you can see that from the bottom but that's really neat and so there's actually two in there already in this one tiny little sweep net which took about four minutes We've got at least a dozen species. Oh, there goes the Katie did. There we go. So look at that. That's really cool. So this is, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the Katie did? So it looks a lot like a grasshopper, but the, the shape of the head is a little different. The color and the antenna are different. So that's really neat. So look at all that diversity already, just from one little sweep net. So imagine, y'all, if you build one of these nets, how are you gonna be able to go into your backyard, look for all these amazing creatures, or come make nets with us, and you can join us to look for insects out here. And let's see if I can find one little leaf hopper. Okay, more, more crickets. Oh, 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 there, there went a leaf hopper. Well, it's called a leaf hopper for a reason, so it literally hopped away. But, oh, there's another cricket. There's so much life. Look at that. Here's a really ancient bug. Um, they're called true bugs from this group called Hemoptera. Wow. So great, guys. We probably caught at least a dozen different species just in that like little three minute or less sweep netting. All right, so now it's time to let our insect friends go. And we just wanna wish them, you know, a good farewell. There, you know, here we are in Cajun Creole, French speaking South Louisiana, so they all speak French. So it's bon courage, bon chance, right? Bon voyage. Um, go forth and multiply. 
Let's see, and make sure there's nobody else left in our net. Just turn it inside out. Great. All right, all the insects have gone home. All right, y'all, well, thanks so much. I enjoyed uh, showing you all how to make one of these nets, and please come join us. We are invited to come hang out with us at the Atelier de la Nature, uh, so we can go on bug hunts and look for all kinds of other neat creatures that are here and learn about them and make art about them. Um, also, I invite you to the last uh, art walk for my exhibition at the Acadiana Center for the Arts, which is Saturday, January 8th, and it's going to be themed on fishes. So there's going to be all kinds of super cool preserved specimens and fishes to draw and look at. And I invite you all to tune in next week for the next virtual art studio.